Before we do anything else, let's have Ralph, why don't you come right up? And then we, I think everyone is here for the water district, so we'll do that right away okay, so fine. everybody can go home before it really. I'll just pass this out uh, for, for Thank you. And one for uh, Yeah, we'll put this in his mailbox. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, uh, Carolyn, for a couple minutes here to um, just uh, give the conclusion of the DPW Facilities Building Committee. As you, you are aware, um, we started this whole process back in 2009, and the <clears throat> select board did provide us with a uh, committee charge, and we have, uh, to the best of my knowledge, followed through very faithfully on that. Down to the end, comment was the committee shall prepare a statement for the annual town report on the project status, which this letter, I hope, would in, uh, take care of that matter there. Right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just um, really thank all of the committee. They've put in a lot, a lot of hours, uh, many, many meetings. Uh, of course, this does go back to 2009 when we had the first committee. And I would first make a special note there um, for uh, uh, Eric Ness. Uh, he really was very instrumental in getting this whole process started. Uh, of course, we had to go through um, looking at different properties and, and uh, finalizing that effort. Then we had to go through the process of uh, uh, bringing on an architect uh, firm, which uh, to me is a complicated procedure and had yeah. to be technically done, and he certainly had the skill to do that. At that point, um, he left for uh, other employment, and uh, I was elected as the committee chair, which I've been uh, very pleased to take care of here, and uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, with the effort of the committee, uh, we've brought this to a good con con conclusion there. I thought it, uh, a good way would be maybe if I just read this letter for the sure. public record, okay? thank you. <clears throat> this is addressed to uh, Carolyn Shores Ness, Select Board Chair. <clears throat> Dear Ms. Ness, uh, we, the Deerfield Department of Public Works Facility Building Committee, are pleased to formally announce our completion of duties as originally charged in May 2009 by the Select Board, and I reference you to a copy of mm -hmm. that. From having chosen a location on the Oxford property to advising the final architect design <clears throat> and working with the OPM and general contractor to town ownership, we trust our charge is satisfactorily completed. It is our belief this new highway facility will accommodate the town town's needs today and long into the foreseeable future. It should be with a sense of pride to the town residents to own such a modern facility <clears throat> designed and constructed to last 50 years and probably many more. Mm -hmm. Coupled with this statement is the fact that our town employees may now perform their duties with a tremendous increase in safety and comfort. And the facility has already shown an increase in productivity as well as protection of the multitude of town-owned equipment. While we have completed the project under budget, it has also provided a salt shed, additional storage, a washdown area, underground salt and oil containment, <clears throat> a 250-kilowatt standby generator, fuel island for diesel and gasoline, along with the demolition of the previous DPW facility and its underground fuel tanks. Sincerely, on behalf of the building committee, we wish the town success with their new facility. It's wonderful. Thank you that's very thank you. much. Where we're at in a great. patch, there's some reference notes there for you. And that's great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for all your work. Yeah, great Ralph, job. thank you. Very great job. I really appreciate it. Well, I'm really happy for the town. I think they've got a wonderful facility, and it's going to pay off in the years to come. And like you said, it's already protecting our equipment, oh. you know, so much so, more than we used to Just have. even tonight, it's we're not going to have hail damage on there. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> and the generator. And, and the, the generator. generator. We may be, we may be concluding right the meeting now. over there. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Ralph, Thank so you, much. Ralph. Please be very careful going home. You, or you might want to you might wanna hang out. Thing. You might want to hang out here for a little bit. <laughs> no, I think I'll get the car undercover before they oh, All right. Okay. Go and quick. Put your hitting. name in for something else, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. You're welcome. Um, we will, um, since everyone is here, why yeah. don't you all come up so well, we can we get you? Yeah, why well, we still have our power and <laughs> skip. From the other power company, it was pointed out. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Hi, nice to meet you again. Um, for our audience, why don't you um, introduce yourselves again? I appreciate you coming again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dawn Trevolini. Um, I was the environmental engineer on the project that's involving all of this. Um... <laughs> Anyways, and I'm from National Grid. And yeah, Paul Knabek from VSC Group, working with National Grid on this. Okay. Stanley Eswinski, Water Commissioner for the Deerfield Fire District. And Elaine Peteroy, the Director of Land Conservation at the Franklin Land Trust. Okay. Um, there was a little bit of confusion, and um, I had talked to Skip and um, found out that the Water District is fine with this. So um, High five. We're, ready. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready to go ahead. Awesome. Um, so in, essentially you just need us to sign off. And I actually have a clean one. Oh, just to okay. Make sure that it's clean and All right. Yeah, that one is. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, here, we'll do this just to make sure. Wait, okay. Did you, oh, you not, already have it's it not marked. Is it the same okay. document? <laughs> oh, no. I just wasn't sure whether like everybody that. had it or not. Oh, good. You okay. bought the town hall and you're going to re refurbish it. There you go. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure that... There, you only have one place for us to mark. Is that true? Right, one page. So oh, okay. So you would vote. Then I, I can give you back this okay. one because that has every page marked. Yep. Oh, yeah. And that's um, so I, I make a motion to support uh, and sign the transfer of land for the to the water district from um, um, New England electric power? New England. Oh, I'm trying New England to, power. New England power and um, have the conservation restriction held by the Franklin Land Trust. Second. Is there any discussion? Is You're all set? No, okay. You guys are good. 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 Happy. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Excellent. Do the water district want to say? Do you want to say? What's that? Did you want to say? No, we're okay. all set. Okay. Should be good. good. Okay. I even brought... That she spoke on your behalf. I don't know when you want to just. <laughs> okay. That has to be yeah. notarized. Oh. Okay. So I can leave it here and pick it up tomorrow because obviously they're known to whoever. I mean, I'm a notary, but it's out there in the rain right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I can leave it. I'll just pick it up in the morning. You can't notarize your own signature. No, not, you know, no, I'm not signing okay. it. No, but I'm. I, we can just leave that document here. I'll okay. Pick it okay. Up. That Perfect. It has all the other signatures. No, no, everyone else we has just, just we, we sign it next. You're I first. see. Right. Yep, you're first, and then um, it goes off to the state, and then and we'll work on the transfer. And okay. I'm guessing it won't be um, recorded for probably like four to six weeks. We have to do the yeah, public some... the notice for the permitting mm -hmm. for okay. them to accept the land gift. Right. All right. Well, great. Thank you. Thank you right. for all your work on this. I know it's been a long, long yeah. process, and we're sorry it took a couple extra weeks, but yeah. Um, and thank you so that everything got sorted out, yep. and the water district is happy. So that's Good. fine. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out tonight. Be yes, safe. I'm hoping. Please. You might. Yes, I was please. just going to say you might want to stay. I'll, I'll tell you about mosquitoes for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, we don't have any minutes tonight, so um, we do have some select board comments. I just want to thank John Sis and the Memorial Day Committee for a really wonderful Memorial Day services here in South Deerfield and in Old Deerfield. Um, it was very, it was very moving, and it was really well done. And um, it always makes me proud of my community. Absolutely. I don't know. Oh, it was, one, it was really great to go um, and, and listen to our Gold Star Mothers and see the other veterans and pay respect um, at a few cemeteries. And we wish we could have had the parade, but again, rain uh, kept us inside. But it was still a wonderful, wonderful ceremony as usual. And John and his committee do a, just a great job with that. Very proud of them. I feel like we are, are so taken care of um, with John Sizz's logistics. Yep. Everybody knows where they're supposed to go and show up, and it's very smooth. And 
and although we, and Trevor said we didn't had another year of not a parade, um, Trevor has poor Trevor hasn't had the actual parade experience. But um, you know, it's always a smooth transition to the indoor services, and I I just want to say thank you. And the um, Frontier Band was wonderful. The sixth graders were great doing the Gettysburg Address at both locations. And oh man, it looks That's like we're having a little down. hail. Well, now for the weather is Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> so all now, hail is breaking loose. <laughs> yeah, all hail is breaking loose. I hope oh. stay safe, okay. people. Stay yeah. safe in your homes. Oh my gosh. Don't go anywhere. Carolyn, you're good at this. If you want yes, to say please anything. be careful. You should not be on the roads right now. Wherever you are, hunker down for a few more minutes. This is passing. This is it's bad. going by at about 27 miles an hour, so it will be by. Give it a few in, minutes. In a few minutes. So please wait. Um, okay, we can swing over to oh, yeah. ticks. The tick season is really, really bad. And um, one of the easiest, simplest things I say every meeting is, is just a Bronco. You can buy Bronco spray up at Tractor Supply. It's perithium is what you want. You can get it online at Amazon. Some people are buying it, they've told me, um, online, and they're spraying it in their yards. I'm not, I'm not sure if you, you know, how effective it is because, of course, you get rain and it washes stuff away. But um, one of the things you can do is you can take a toilet paper roll, cover it in tape so it's a little bit waterproof, take lint out of your dryer and um, spray it with perithium, and then stick these around the yard because this perithium is toxic to ticks, and mice will take this back for nesting material and um, then um, it will kill the ticks. So, and that's what's bringing in, you know, the little bunnies, cute bunnies, deer, everything that's all the little varmints in your yard are what's bringing the ticks into your yard. So, keep your lawns mowed, keep your bushes clipped back, and um, stick these around, and it, it'll give you a little bit of protection. But I, I just want to make sure that you understand that you should, that this, like the Bronco spray, obviously it's for horses, but um, you can spray your dogs, but please don't spray your cats. For whatever reason, the physiology of cats is just not, um, they don't, they don't um, uh, shed this is the same way as like a dog does or a horse. Um, so just spray your clothes. Sp um, spray your kids' clothes, um, and your animals are fine, but just not cats. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and then um, we'll go into the mosquitoes. This next week, um, VDCI, uh, we voted at town meeting to um, support more surveillance, another year of surveillance. So VDCI will be driving around and setting traps in a few different places just to see what's happening. They're going to trap a little bit um, the first two weeks in June, and it's been wet enough, so we're going to have some really interesting um, mosquitoes out, and then, then they'll set some more permanent traps um, when they find out what's out there. Um, your bird baths, uh, like watering troughs for animals, dishes for dogs and stuff, make sure you do a qu quick swish around with... Um, a scrubby or even your hand, you know, if it doesn't gross you out. Um, just make sure you're rinsing them out because what happens is the mosquitoes lay their eggs and they hatch under two, within two days, okay? And then, the, but once the eggs are laid, they can hatch out in two, two days or they can sit there for a year or more. So once they get wet again, then, they'll, then they'll, the lava will um, emerge and it's two or three days after that the, your adult will emerge. So it's really important, bird baths, to scrub them out. Take your, if you have a kitchen scrubby that is beat, take it out and that's your bird bath scrubby. Because you, what you want to do is dislodge the eggs. And even if you're dumping your bird bath on a regular basis, you might not be dislodging the eggs. So it's really important to do that to your watering troughs, any outside watering pans for your animals, or um, you know, bird baths and stuff, okay? And mosquitoes only fly, uh, you know, a little ways away, a couple, few blocks worth away from 
where they emerge. So you really can have an impact if you police your yard. So it's really important after a rainstorm like this, do you have your flower pots? Everybody has lovely flower pots out. You walk, drive around town, everybody's beautiful yards. You know, you gotta dump that little saucer. And that's, there's enough water in there to have mosquitoes. So it's really important to do those kind of things. Spare tires. All Spare, stuff. Any, anything that will hold. A, a, a soda cap is enough to, to, to hatch mosquitoes, okay? And we're going to have a bad year of West Nile disease. Uh, I just went to a mosquito meeting, and um, the, they're anticipating not much for triple E this year because we had a dry fall. That was still, we had the drought hanging over, but we've had a very wet spring. We just keep having rain and rain and rain. That, that's the West Nile disease kind of mosquitoes that live in catch basins, in your backyards, that kind of thing. So th that's going to be happening. Um, the only other announcement I have from a select board point of view is um, Pat did some digging for me, actually. Um, we want to make sure that we um, announce the June 12th and 13th. We're going to have ICS 100 and NIM 700 training. This is um, the, it's a two-evening course taught by John Taylor, who is Shelburne Falls Fire Chief. He's got lots of stories and lots of experience. He's going to introduce the incident command system which is the ICS system, and it provi um, provides the background for you to be an effective volunteer and to help us in an emergency. Um, the NIMS is a national incident management class, um, I mean, the system that we will that you have a little background in, and that will give you the opportunity to um, help us if we have an event. Um, we have the police and fire use ICS all the time, and it's, I'm going to make Trevor come. Um, <laughs> he actually has to be mandated I'm to, excited to, come. Um, to come. But anyway, we're going to have pizza. I'm going to buy him pizza, so you need to come. But the idea um, is that if, you're gonna, if we have an event, we need volunteers that are trained and, and know how to work, and that we, can't, or we don't have enough responders. And our responders have to respond, and we need volunteers to back them up and not have to manage our volunteers. So this is a, your chance to be um, a, a help us as a community if we have an event. And Pat did some research. The last time we did this was in 2005 and 2006. Um, Pat O'Brien from um, West Deerfield did a class for us, and we had our little emergency committee. And the reason why was because we, there was a bird flu outbreak in China, and we were, were, we were breaking down uh, the town into neighborhoods. This is when Zach Smith was um, working for the Deerfield EMS, and he, we did um, all kinds of drills, you know, so we could isolate neighborhoods. People knew how to stay home in, you know, um, and, you know, we're telling you, you know, stockpile toilet paper. You don't want to run out of toilet paper and have to go to the grocery store and be exposed to people and all kinds of stuff. We were doing this. But <laughs> coincidentally, the reason why I was really pushing this is because the H7 N9 avian flu outbreak in China is happening right now, and that's why I was thinking we've got to do this. We've got to do this. We have, if we we have had no flooding events since Irene, and our riverbanks are eight to 16 feet lower. So we don't honestly, if we have a severe event, we don't know exactly where the floodwaters are going to go and how severe. Except it's going to, we definitely know it's going to cut our town in half, and it's going to isolate neighborhoods. So it's really important that we do this. And then, like I said, this flu that's outbreaking in China has about a 40 percent um, death rate. So if you catch it, it you know it's not passing person to person quite effectively yet, but there's always that opportunity to mutate, and the best thing to do is to, you know, stay home, and, you know, we, we did research, the samical, the elderberry extract, um, whether you take it in the cough syrup form or the pills, and that kind of thing is, is the most effective thing against this avian flu, because uh, humans really don't have any immunity, so... Yes, the, if this spreads and it mutates, there will be a vaccine out, but it's six to eight months before the 
you know, the, the vaccine can be out and available. So you were on our own. And it's really important, like I said, to be able to be effective and to organize as neighborhoods and to and protect ourselves and to look out for each other because nobody's coming. And I remember in 2005, we had that awful October flooding and, and that was the year Katrina happened. Things are definitely better, MEMA's better, FEMA's better, but ultimately, especially if they're starved on the federal level for dollars, we are on our own. So we need volunteers. So if you're at all interested, please come and take this course. Leave your contact information with us and so that we can reach out to you in an event and, and you know what to do. And hopefully there will not be a spread of the H7N9. And Pat will come back and dig this out in another 10 years <laughs> when we have to do this again and say, oh, we had, last time we had a class was 10 years ago, and mm -hmm. this is why. And so hopefully nothing will happen. But just in case, we hope people will come um, to our training on June 12th and the 13th. It's a Monday and a Tuesday, 6 to six 9, to here nine. in the town hall. Yep. Okay. I, now that we've gone through the storm. I just, I just oh, wanted yes. to read. Um, we had a nice letter uh, from the state uh, about our building commissioner. So I just wanted to read this. Um, this is from um, Gregory White, general counsel and chief of staff. Um, so uh, it says, Dear Mr. Kalaszewski, I'm writing on behalf of the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulations um, as the oversight agency for Home Improvement Contractor Act uh, Mass General Law Chapter 142A to provide you with an additional resource to protect your resident homeowners who have entered into a contract with a contractor for home improvement renovations or work on their primary home. Over the last 18 months, we have heard directly and incidentally uh, of, uh, of your success attributable to your own efforts to encourage and require compliance among contractors. We greatly appreciate your diligence and continue to rely on you um, as the permitting authority to ensure permits are not issued to contractors who are either unregistered using uh, home improvement contractor registration numbers that are invalid, revoked, suspended, or expired, or using registration numbers that belong to someone else. You play a significant role as the permitting authorities to ensure ensuring that every building permit uh, displays the contractor certificate of registration number and, and is issued in the appropriate, uh, to the appropriate person. We hope that you will find the attached affidavit for use uh, document as a supplement to permit application from the contractor in the home improvement con uh, contracting work. During the course of the recent uh, complaint hearing against the contractor, the municipality, municipal building official submitted a version of this document that his own town uses to obtain additional information from the applicant contractor. The form ensured um, further protection for homeowner, and we commend the town for taking the initiative uh, to require the supplement for permit applications. We're, um, we are very pleased with the positive feedback we received to date from both building department and home improvement contractors. So thank you for your cooperation and assistance. So Dick is doing a great, great job, and they're giving State. us some yeah, the state's recognizing it's doing good work. And I want to thank Dick. We really appreciate it. And, uh, and every single homeowner that has had issues uh, appreciates it very much, too. So mm -hmm. thank you, Dick. Looking out for him. Yeah. Um, next item on the agenda is um, surplus property disposition policy. Um, I looked at the policy, and I looked at the form that you've generated, Wendy. Mm -hmm. And, well, this looks great. Mm -hmm. So... Um, if we, if so, what do you want us to do? We just vote okay, this yeah. as presented. Yes. Or do you want? That would be fine if you would like that. I I have draft on there, but if you adopt it, I'll clean it, take the draft off, and you can sign it. Um, sure. I set it at ten thousand dollars. Anything below ten, we can dispose of through the various um, channels. There, it gives many options, and we'll get to this in a moment. Um, um, this is somewhat. Um, not somewhat, but generally, uh, we're moving this on this now because um, you voted months ago to um, dispose of a couple of old cruisers, and we mm -hmm. would like to move that forward, but you need to have a policy in place to do that. So um, 
the law allows it to be for um, a less bureaucratic process for um, up to ten thousand dollars or uh, up to ten thousand dollars of value you could adopt a lower value but you're engaged through all of this regardless mm -hmm. so it needs to come to you anyway so if you make I'm, it a lower amount uh, you'd still have a say so so I would say stick with the 10 because that's what the law allows uh, yeah I'm comfortable with the 10 because we have to sign off anyway right um, so yeah. we did vote um, the two cruisers that are parked at the highway garage. So okay. we don't have to do anything more on those, do we? No, but you do need to vote to adopt this this policy. This policy, and then you can get rid of the right. Cruisers. Well, we'll talk about the cruisers after okay. you do that. So I'll make I a, do have something to say about that. I'll make okay. a motion to accept the uh, the policy for disposal of surplus supplies less than ten thousand dollars in value, as that's listed here. Um, I second that. Is there any further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so what did you want us to do about the cruisers okay. since we, are, we already voted them? So have you, you have in front of you also, um, I've given you some notes like this. Which the is, form. Yeah. Yep. The, um, and this is, if you look at the top, those are the two vehicles. Yep. Yep. And um, you, you just simply say, fine. <laughs> Oh, okay. Do you want to read them aloud or whatever? Well, they are um, and, and one what? is a six year old, well, it's 2011 Ford Crown uh, Victoria police sedan, six years old, fair condition, unsafe for police operations, his estimated value is 2000. The second one is a 2011 Ford, uh, Ford Crown Vic, six years old as well, bad, does not run. Um, Estimated value is 300. Okay, and so what you do decide under this policy is whether um, how to dispose of it. And from the chief has recommended that on the value, his estimated value for the first vehicles, ten two thousand dollars would be to um, place it online for auction, which mm -hmm. can be done. There's a, a site that works very well. And other municipalities use. So if you would like to do that. You want to vote to do that, then I will pursue that for you. Okay, I make a motion that we um, use the online auction site to maximize our second value here. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then on the second vehicle, um, either put online or just sent to the crusher is what the chief mm -hmm. said. So yep. we could try online and go you don't from get anything. There. Yep. Okay. So that's that's fine. If you'd like to do that. Um, sure. Do you, uh, I make a motion then to um, try online, mm -hmm. but if we don't get anything, then just disposing it as with a crusher, I guess, is fine. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sure J John is really good about trying to generate the best options, oh, so yeah. Yeah. I'm not really worried we about we it. We talked about it a bit. Yeah. So. And then but that's nice because they're parked at the highway garage and they look you know, the, not yes, people have asked about it and talked the, about it, so we just take care of it. The date we uh, declared these surplus was last September, right? Correct. Okay. But you needed the policy in place. Okay. Yeah, but, but so we didn't would have, today's date be the date we declared? You can revote it if you want, if that, if that might just, you know. Well, today's date, the date you did the policy, if you want to revote the actual declaration of them. Why don't we do it in case there's yeah. any question? Right. Right. I, would su I would suggest, I was thinking. Okay. okay. You want to make a motion? So I make a motion to um, declare uh, two said vehicles um, as surplus for disposal. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we had an earlier vote, but we voted it again, so if there's any question. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is the one-day liquor licenses. For Eagle Brook? Do I have those? Nope, she just put them together. <laughs> okay. They came in very late. <laughs> All right. The requests. Where's Kip when you need him? I, <laughs> I hear I he's doing great. Oh, way. good. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Hi, this Kip. is <laughs> alumni <laughs> reunion on. From Eagle Brook? Yep. So one of the 
on June, 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 June 8th. 9th. Oh, I have a 9th. You have an 8th. Oh. Okay, so oh, it's two, two of them. them. Yep, yep, two of them. Yes, okay. So I make a motion to uh, authorize a one-day liquor license um, for Alan Chase Foundation Eagle Brook School for um, one on June 8th and one on June 9th. Um, it's not ninth day, or maybe oh, AC eighth, eighth through the tenth, tenth and, and then ninth, ninth through the eleventh. Yeah, because you have it set up and I see knocked yep. down. Oh, okay. oh um, is there any further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing the, oh, I have to second it. Second it. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We can sign those. Oh, do you want to use a stamp on this? Uh, oh, yeah, oh, you know what? We should sign these because um, Kip is not here. Okay. Top and bottom? Yep. I'm so glad he's doing well. Yeah. Did you hear it? Just hear it? Yeah, he just oh. texted back. So. Oh, okay, good. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, voting Wendy um, as our chief procurement officer. Um, I thought. We have to do. Yes. We have to sign in something. We have to send it in. Okay. Um, I make a motion to um, appoint Wendy Foxman, our town administrator, as our appointment of chief procurement officer. Second. Um, if the form, Carolyn, for yeah. Is this, um, oh, is there a, um, was there an expiration in this or is it just, in for, or no. just until the next person is, this Correct. is appointed? Okay. Um, or all those in I favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, I'm, I need to be authorized to sign. I authorize, um, select chair to sign. Uh, second that. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> all right. Uh, just for informational purposes, in order, what is prompting this at this time, as opposed to later or earlier, is um, I'm finally willing to do this. <laughs> now, um, the assessors, <laughs> we have, in order to do a request for proposals, um, which is an alternative and process to, you can either go out to bid or do a request for proposals. With bids, you accept the lowest responsible uh, bidder. With uh, proposals, you evaluate. You don't have to um, accept the lowest if you, uh, another bidder or proponent uh, offers the services or supplies at um, what's usually services, um, meeting other criteria that are more important than the bottom line, so to speak. So at any rate, I have a project right now, the assessors, um, recertification mm -hmm. and um, we need to have someone designated in order to go through with that process so thank you thank you very that, much that's for in the works to do that we, so um you know the i skipped your town administrator's report you know I, I, I can go into that, that, that when we talk about the operating capital okay, budget so okay. the next thing on the um budget good. was um I, I had absolutely no problem with the schedule. Uh, the only thing that Trevor had mentioned is um, that maybe in November-ish we should get together because we'll know what the federal budget is and um, whether they're doing a continuing resolution or, or what wanna, version okay. they did. Well, so um, I, I did add um, you, you have that version in front of you, but after uh, Trevor and I met with the Finance Committee and they reviewed this, mm -hmm. um, they had some the input um, they gave, which I was making an assumption, but I added it here just so it's clear. Uh, the first uh, box, the mm -hmm. first task is begin assessing developing revenue projections. Mm -hmm. And here I have October and ongoing which would inc be inclusive of what you're talking about, so that we continue to look at the budget projections, um, the revenue projections, both from you know uh, local receipts as well as state, and how well, their state I, is affected I, by I federal. Was, yeah, I was so ups worried about next year based on the budget that was being promulgated from the Trump administration, but 
You know, they did a continuing resolution until September, which is basically Obama's budget. So that really has, I mean, we're not impacted. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I, you know, I just think there's such a mess with this Russian stuff that we might have a continuing resolution again. Or else his budget is going to be mitigated mm -hmm. enough so that we're not going to have to be so stressed out next year. It, yeah, it's very unclear I mean, as to how yeah. what's going on at the federal level budget-wise impacts us. There are a number of programs that come from the federal government that pass through the state. They've talked yep. about getting rid of uh, community development block grant money. That yes. is the mo major federal money well, we Well, see, get. what I was worried about is the Medicaid expansion just by itself mm -hmm. is a billion dollars in right. Massachusetts. So right. if that's impacted, you can't tell me that the state is going to be funding exactly. local aid mm -hmm. or uh, Chapter uh, 70 at the same level. Right. It's going to have a huge impact, and we've got to pay attention. I think education will be the clearly the earliest probable hit with that. Plus, we're seeing, as you probably have read, um, the revenue projections are down at the state level. Right. And even though we are, the Senate has just passed budget, it's going to conference committee, and it's optimistic. Right. It may not stay that way, so we need to watch that and see what happens over yep. the next month or so, mm -hmm. and be prepared for potentially other cuts during the year. Yep. So, um, but I put on going there very, very specifically with that in mind to constantly pay attention to what's going on. The other thing I had in that first block mm -hmm. was personnel board comp schedule kind of, like I know that we talked about maybe looking at what our expenses are, a lot of it is salary. So kind of laying out some of the picture ahead of time. And I think that was a comment that was made the other night as well to start looking at you know, we can figure 60% of our budget based on what we're, we know we're going to have for salaries coming out based on the comp mm -hmm. schedule, if it changes or doesn't change. Um, and then, you know, talking with the assessors and seeing what, you know, um, about where the assessments are going to be to try and get an earlier picture, I think, is what, they, mm -hmm. what the Finance Committee was looking for was earlier pictures so we could start discussions right. earlier. I think there are just certain things we won't know that early. Right. But this is the the goal here is for us to get on information as quickly as possible. There's there's a, a danger in that in doing that as well as wasting time or mm -hmm. or building on assumptions rather than more clarity. Correct. But um, wh is there language you'd like to add here and in what nope. box or a timetable? I just wanted okay. to mention that we we're you know that that was right. a, a vein of discussion. Yeah, this is a day. very. Um, conservative in the sense that it's beginning earlier than most others do and that we have, I believe, in the past, that Deerfield has in the past to really start paying I, attention I, to this. I want to do a lot of internal work as well. Re, I was going to say, restart we the fiscal group of the you know town financial officials, yep. not the appointed ones, but the accountant and the treasurer mm -hmm. and the assessors and myself um, to meet and follow through the budget year and Right. You know, we're doing the TAP program again, which is a specialized DOR a tax rate, a tax, what is it, rate setting. It's a whole program to uh, get our rates set earlier. Earlier. So, Good. and um, okay. I think also free cash certified and all of that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So we can move through this process. But, right. So um, we have to do our work here for the policymakers <laughs> to do their work as well. Yep. So, um, also, do you want would they uh, talk about the finance committee meeting a little bit more? Or well, around? I think you know, uh, on that vein, we were just really discussing coming together sooner, um, and again, getting a picture of, of our, you know, wh where we're at. Listening to you know, obviously, we have to get the info from the department heads, but um, just trying to trying to get on the same page. So maybe we don't have. Um, town meeting can go a little easier, pre-town meeting can go a little easier, we're just, we're all kind of, at least we know maybe where our differences might be based on a selectman's um, vision of where we should be moving the town forward and a finance committee um, might have a different vision of, of where we're going, but at least we can get all of that out in the open earlier and, um, you know, hopefully we'll know as much as we can know from a budget standpoint, but, um, the more communication we can have, and I think we're hearing that from the finance committee, is we just want to communicate and um, have everybody know where everyone else is coming from so that they're 
they just wanted to feel a little bit more informed about where our policies might be and how those might affect, and then also the bigger ex expenses that are coming up in town with the sewer study committee mm -hmm. moving along on their issue and kind of, mm -hmm. and you know, talk of a library expansion. So there's all these major expenses that are coming, and we really need to put out a good five, six year plan of, you know, I mean, we have capital plan, but also just, and these things fall into capital, but just the big expenses so people in, in town can really grasp what is coming down the road and what we can and can't afford to do as a community what we what we are forced to do you know in some yeah. areas so i think it was it was a good meeting um the Your take yeah on. i just want to get back to this for a second because mm -hmm. some of it is um not decided necessary i have st right. start and asterisk thing here i think that we have a little bit of a push pull between the finance committee and the select board um as to roles mm -hmm. and i think we need to um Define. assert our role here um, and um, the goal is to have a wonderful process oh did I actually say that yes. I can <laughs> yeah I hear it. it's out there that wonderful word um, to it. have a very good process that people feel well informed on top of the information and engaged as to the degree they um, wish to be and need to be and mm -hmm. I certainly would like to see things go differently as well this year than they did last year, and would like the board to be engaged as early as possible. Well, I'm looking forward to this budget year compared to the last mm -hmm. couple. So it's nice to have you on board now, yes. full time, right. mm -hmm. instead of having no one. It was really tough. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, so th you know, think about it some more. But um, uh, mm -hmm. look at these. Uh, little comments I made below because I thought th those are the items that are slightly discussional. You know, the, everything's up for discussion, but these are items where I think there's a little bit of various uh, perspectives from the two boards about who, what. So um, we can revisit this as well. So. Yeah, well, well, I think once we have the federal, what, you know, once October 1st hits and, and we find out what's happening on the federal level, I think we'll all be much more comfortable because we'll know what we're dealing with. I mean, we may not like it, but at least we'll know, we'll have a clearer picture. Um, it's not, it's the unknown mm -hmm. and the impact that we might have on our budgets is, is I think is what mm -hmm. is freaking everybody. It was freaking me out mm -hmm. because um, just if you look through some of those cuts to Massachusetts, which is the revenues, as you point, are mm -hmm pointed out are down or the you know slightly not a lot but they are down and you know we, they're, we they're just below the projections right and, and that, we just can't absorb you know the billion dollar health care cuts the you know um, the other cuts mm -hmm. that they're talking about um, are, are tremendous mm -hmm. really so uh, uh, there's no new growth in Massachusetts to cover that kind of those kind of cuts so um, it will be tough if if the budgets go through that's been that's been put out there. But I I, I mean I, I don't think it's going to. So I'm not as worried as I was a, few, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, even. So okay. Um, um, what other things did I skip over that I should have asked well, you to I'll, talk about? Yeah, I'll just I have I can just talk about them related to that. Uh, I talked with Senator Rosenberg's office yesterday about our special legislation. They needed a plan. I don't know why every single council for every level of the state budget process, the legit, you know, House and the Senate and the governor's office, they all need different things. But I got them the best thing I could find, and I haven't heard again. So they were hoping to vote tomorrow. So we're waiting to hear. Oh, about that. I hope they can straighten that out. Um, also, another thing came up at the finance committee meeting, although it's not directly a finance committee of concern was the TIF that was granted for the bakers. And um, actually, the next day, I happened to get uh, something from the state agency that has to authorize that. And I looked it up, and I saw that it, it's still good. You signed it in 2015. Um, they have to do these reports, even though they haven't even begun a building in town. Um, they've been doing that for two years. Um, but um, it's something you may we would probably have to revisit um, when we move to that stage. So okay, to bring that up. Um, Thank you for for running that down because we certainly don't want to 
cause any issues? No. Um, and uh, I'm waiting to hear back from council on the uh, uh, legal documents. We, we haven't announced that you have decided to go ahead with accepting the church, but if you want to announce that. Um, um, we voted in executive session to accept the gift of the church. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just final, waiting for the attorneys to finalize the okay. uh, documents. Okay, so do you think it will be our next meeting? Um, I don't know. I, I'm doing what I can to okay. yeah. uh, encourage that process. Um, Trevor and I are gonna go up to Berniston um, next week um, for lunch and at the senior center up there. Uh, my father spearheaded the renovation of Powers Institute um, for a senior center, which was the old high school. So we're hoping to get some t tidbits of information that will help us with our church process. Yeah. So that will be good. Um, other things. To that. Um, yes, Rainy. You know, I've been looking for. Oh, Rainy had a I'm, question. Do you want to? I'm giving a report now, but you're welcome if you want to speak. That's fine. Okay, I don't want to proceed. I'm just curious, is the church, is that official? Has the town taken over the church? Not no, yet. not yet. Okay. That's well, what we, we, like we have, um, we were hoping tonight, but um, the documents haven't come back from the lawyers, so maybe so. next, no our next select board meeting. But we're, we voted as a, in executive session to um, accept the gift, and um, we're going to go up and have lunch up at the senior center in Berniston and try to figure out um, a game plan. They had a very successful game plan and so we're gonna try to sort Just something out. Yeah. Yep, Good. because it was, honestly, Powers Institute was in a, a lot rougher shape and um, it, it, people wanted to tear it down. And, you know, uh, my parents were like, it's a wonderful building, so. And it, it was very successful. So we want to make sure, we want to see if there's any, anything we can learn from the experience and um, visit the senior center up there and see what they did a few years ago. Thank you. They did a lot of work with volunteer, um, the leveraging volunteer work, uh, leveraged funding on the state level. So we're hoping that um, we have CPA funds, we have you know, maybe volunteers to do things. And um, uh, this past weekend at the Memorial Day um, service, um, I talked to the veterans group. They'd really like to move back into Deerfield and they're willing to do some work at the church because they used to be at the senior center here. And so they're, you know, I mean, we have, we're we have yeah, we're reaching out and try, we need to organize uh, as much volunteer stuff as we can and, and, um, see what we can do for an effort. We don't, we don't know enough yet, and we don't actually have the building, so we can't act right. like we own it. Right, and um, we need to take care of a few um, uh, building issues with the accessibility before we can allow public use of the building. Yes, so there may and, we, be and once we accept it, we have to um, have, have, you know, it has accessibility issues and, um, Exit signs and um, it needs accessible bathrooms and stuff like that. So there are a few things that we have to do to, so we can use it. And um, we also want to, one of the things that um, I'm hoping to see at Powers Institute was how did they figure out the use of the space? Because it was, you know, all chopped up. And so one of the things we're going to do is look at their space and and see how they decided to use their space and how they, is it, is the use of the space um, good? You know, what, what, what are the comments now years on um, for what they did? So it's those kind of questions we want to ask and how they leveraged. I, I know, I remember my dad talking about some stuff, but I want to have Trevor with me so that we can talk about how, you know, leveraging what we, potentially have in our community um, towards funding and stuff like that. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, the process of um, the hiring process for an executive assistant is, assistant is underway. Um, I, the ad said that applications would be starting to be reviewed last Friday, May 26th. I received um, 13. 
Oh, and good. I would say probably half are um, interviewable. <laughs> so I don't have a whole uh, process figured out. I've, I've had so much on my plate, and mm -hmm. I'm also, I'll sneak this in right now. As you know, I'm going to be gone the week after next uh, FEMA training. And so I'm keeping that in mind in terms of um, a, pr a procedure for going forward. Haven't figured out yet whether to involve a small committee or who and that kind of thing, and you'll be involved. So um, that's just a sort of update on that, um, and uh, expect to hopefully have someone in place in July. So um, let's see what else. I told you that um, the next your next meeting will be when I'm not here on June 14th, that Wednesday, and Pat is working on getting our your annual appointments up to date so that you will um, get to them. Now I know this isn't not only true here but in many towns, it takes a few meetings and, uh, over the course of a couple months to make sure you get everybody just because people change their mind and then you have to find someone else or one or one reason or another, it's not a one night deal. So, but that, that could take some time. Um, let's see, uh, uh, well just also at the, um, Finance Committee meeting, getting back to that for a second, they did a couple of uh, reserve fund transfers, and we've got a few more that will be coming up. Their next meeting is July 10th, um, which will is in time for doing the last transfers for the fiscal year. Um, not too high in the amount of money, um, other than the, the only one, about 13,000, a little more than that for the a still water bridge, which is yeah. substantially less than what we had anticipated yes. that was going to end up costing. And again, yeah. thank you to Kevin. Yeah, uh, what was what was the five mil dollar on the still water bridge? It was We're around 13, right around seven, thirteen thousand. Yeah, far less than the seventy thousand that we had estimated. Yeah, and I just got our um, letter about our general insurance and workers comp, and that that came in less than what we had budgeted. Great. Um, we had anticipated, based on their recommendation, more than it actually will be. And if we pay one of the bills by August 1st and money's in place, um, we can get another 3% reduction. So, right. um, let's see what else do I want to tell you about? Still, I have so much, um, but I won't. I won't tell you about everything. I'm working on the pledge letters. I sent out a couple more pledge letters because they've not come in. Um, um, we still just had the two from the out of the four. Um, discontinued roads, we're working, Kevin and I are working on that project. Um, I sat down with, um, with Zach Smith to talk, to review this SCEMS agreement. That's mm -hmm. out of date, it needs to be re, you yeah. know, and I know it's been reviewed before, but we caught a few more things, so looking at that. Um, and in short order in July sometime, I hope to uh, recommend, um, and why don't we put the word out? We, I'd like to create a bylaws committee, and um, I've already talked to Bruce St. Peters, who's the man for the job, um, to help us update our, our, our general bylaws. As you know, you've been yeah, somewhere every out town meeting band-aiding them. So mm -hmm. yeah. um, I've also got some new and helpful, very helpful information about to make that a worthwhile process. Um, and and, and um, Trevor and I will get together soon to talk about this uh, DLTA project looking at Business Elm Street and Elm Street. improvements in a project working with FERCOG on, on that and engaging. Mm -hmm. I've had a number of people who own buildings approach me and said they're interested. And Great. this, pro oh, this, this part you. of the process that will involve finding out who all of them yes, are and who's interested are, in that kind of thing. So um, that's it. At your, not your next meeting, I know Kip has brought this up a few times and I will have this prepared for your meeting on the June 28th when I return. Um, is this Chapter 32B uh, letter, which uh, opens up the process for the health trust to consider changing uh, their insurance plans. And it's a very <coughs> arcane thing. I won't go into it now, and I won't, I'll try to say as little about that when we get to that point on okay. the 28th as well, but I will give you all the information you need. I also discovered um, something I'd like to pursue. Um, there is a grant program the state has, and it's just too late in the year to apply, but they will have it again next year to, for assistance to prepare an, an, an ADA plan, which <coughs> is something we, the town committed to a year or so mm -hmm. ago. Yep. We've, yep. Been, we've been getting by with these little MOUs every year, but given our size and our activity, I think we should 
do right by the um, ADA mm -hmm. and put that together. So I, I'm, okay. I'll talk about that more when the opportunity comes. Um, would we have a possibility of, um, if, we, if we have the church, would we, if we make that handicap accessible, would there be any grant opportunities for that? Well, there's two, there's two parts to the program. One is a plan, which we need to do. Mm -hmm. The second is for um, activities. Um, they get priority if you've named um, ADA activities, um, uh, Americans for Disabilities Act, sorry, I should have said that at the beginning, um, to, make, to do accessibility projects, but we'd have to do the plan first. Um, but I need to find out because they ask whether you've named that as a priority in your community compact agreement. And it seems to me that those agreements should be malleable as you address issues. And I'm mm -hmm. looking into that right now to see if okay. that's something we could add and that would give us a leg up in yeah. this grant process. So, um, Have we heard from the M MVP? No. I don't. I don't recall when they said they were going to be making decisions. Um, they said they said that, that it would be the end of May. Okay. Yeah. Well, I. That was why there was such a rush to get all that right. in. I think they probably got a lot more applications than they thought they were going to get. So, oh, okay. Um, and well, thank you for, again for, do, for making sure that that got in. Okay. Yep, it got in. <laughs> I know. Well, I think we have a. I think we have a good chance of um, getting the I designation, hope so. and hopefully that will give us some priority for culvert money. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, I know one more thing that I wanted to mention. I have this here. Um, I both, uh, in this course of 10 days, had received a notice about, um, um, uh, and, and I think this is a good public announcement to make at this time for people, is they're going to be doing scarifying and repaving of 91, the Deerfield mm -hmm. stretch, um, from up by the way, sta way station down to, I don't know how far, frankly, because it's unclear. They use mile markers, and that's not helpful to me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be, and it's starting Monday. And I called today to find out, are they going to be closing a lane? We don't really know about that. Um, and um, Kevin is going to look into that further, because Warner Brothers has a contract. So just like to let people know. Uh, during, also, shortly after that, I got a notice Well, from, we have uh, more traffic on 5 and 10, so. Well, well that's what I'm getting to now. Yes. <laughs> we are, there, that's under design, as you might know, that they've been taking, a, there's a three-leg process, or three-phase yeah. process of redoing 5 and 10 through our stretch. And they've done the southern, they're doing the middle, which is us, and then they'll be getting to the North Deerfield Greenfield part um, in a year or two, or not. We don't know exactly what that schedule. But at any rate, I did get a letter from the designers, the design engineers, Greenman Pedersen, on that, and I called them today to ask whether they could come out and meet with our public safety people, and just for them to review. We're talking about um, a bike lane and some sidewalk work and all of that. This is from where they left off by the intersection of 116 and 5 and 10, southern intersection, up until I'm not sure. I think it's up by the fire station. Will they I'm take into account the new? Yes, and, and that's system. exactly that's the question great. I asked. So kind of the road, the road safety right audit that we had here, um, hope, yes, they should be doing that. So I'll get more information for you, but I'm hoping we can set up an in-house meeting to review the plans, mm -hmm. and then can, and come back to you with that, and then we can give input to MAP to go we to you on that. we had quite a lot of inquiry, really, on stuff, yeah. the, especially in the northern end, so. Mm -hmm. we, that's, be, that's the next phase. I did ask yeah. months ago about that. Yeah. Um, but if we want input, we need to do it. So this is wonderful that you're setting this up so we can at least start the discussions. Right. Um, so I was afraid they were going to be doing both projects at once, and but it, you know we're just in, still in design stage for the five and ten project. But I do want to find out, you know, they, on ninety one they will be doing most of the work this year, but they're going to do a a, a, a new pave, a new surface application next year. So we do need to find out um, the well, timing of these things. On that north end, things. right by Richardson's Candy Kitchen, we, we need that culvert to be upsized. Right. We were talking about that today. We're going to – we'll fi try to find out timeline when that's going okay. to be happening. Because that um, – There's a lot of processes to that because that of the backs wetlands up. issues. And yeah. it, um, I talked to TransCanada, who is now Great Rivers, and 
um, the license supposedly is changing over with no, they don't have to do anything, but uh, Matt Cole, the person that we deal with, um, he has said that he, we are concerned about the inundation maps because of I, the damage from Irene. And so we, if we get updated inundation maps, we can force them to replace that culvert mm -hmm. with a bigger size because we can show that it really does flood. Mm -hmm. I mean, it floods even before, but now it will definitely flood. I'm, I'll try to find out where they're at with the design stage okay. on that. And I'll I mean, that's really, that mm -hmm. they need to put an open bottom culvert in there. There's just no question. Um, they, and I know it's going to be expensive, so we have to we have to start squawking mm -hmm. about it. Well, right they don't now. want their work to be destroyed either, so I know, would hope they'd I know. invest in a preventative yeah. measure. Mm -hmm. so. Well, yeah. if, if we can get those maps, we can show that mm -hmm. it will be covered. The the whole road will be covered, and so that's why it's really important mm -hmm. that we get that done. Okay. Oh, I got. I should really make a note on that. follow-up. I'll okay. stop. I'm done. I'm okay. Ready. Now. Well, um, if there is no other public business, comment. do you have public comment or anything? Thank you for coming. Yes. It's really nice to have an yes. audience. Well, you learn a lot. Yeah. yeah. Time to Hard to digest it because, first of all, when I was I couldn't hear I, a lot. I know, I know. I think either. we couldn't hear very much. <laughs> I just really do want to thank the Memorial Committee and John Sis when I was talking. The, the hail was the, coming the down. really hail was coming down. But really, honestly, the Memorial Day services are so lovely in They're town. They're wonderful. And it really makes you very proud to be part of Deerfield. They do a good job. And thank you again for coming. Yes. It's so lovely. <laughs> have people that are interested. I, I don't know how you do what you do. <laughs> I just it's all fun. It's good stuff. <laughs> you have to, you have to be say, really you concerned. Do do I do this Thank every you. day, what you what just did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. We are. No, we're all no, done. We're, we're going to adjourn. Yeah. And when we the sun's out, so it's in so, our yard. Yeah, it's great. I'm just afraid because i got solar panels. And I, we, I haven't had mm. ale oh. since they were up. And I yep. don't know how much impact those guys can take. I know. Find out. I've got to find out. Yes. <laughs> so. It was good to thank see you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And I thank you. will take a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. And I will second that.